going on, Sumolings? It's Lindsay with AppSumo, and we are back with another product walkthrough webinar. We're going to get going in just a minute, but I want to give everyone a minute to just trickle in. Uh, today, we have Nick, uh, who is the onboarding specialist at Soapbox, who will be walking us through the software. Soapbox is a note-taking and agenda management tool designed to build better relationships between managers and their teams. It is an awesome tool for your meetings. It's really all you'll need. So we're very excited to dive into it today. Soapbox is available right now on AppSumo as a freebie. So there's really no excuse uh, not to give it a shot. Before we uh, go through the walkthrough, just two quick things. The first is if you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the Q&A box down below and we will circle back to those at the end of the webinar. Um, and next, we will send out a replay of this not long after it's finished, so you can watch it whenever you want. Um, but also, if you need to step out, you are able to do that and you can join us again later. So uh, let's get started. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this over to you for the walkthrough. Uh, Sumo Lings, if you have any questions um, as we're going through it, you can go ahead and leave them in the Q&A box below. Uh, Shannon from Soapbox is there, so she'll be able to help you. But again, we will circle back at the end. All right, passing this on to you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take you through a little of the walkthrough of Soapbox. We'll kind of set it up into how to create an agenda in Soapbox, how to start adding items to that agenda running a meeting and then as well as ending it. Uh, so you can see here, I'm in our homepage. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna create a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, there's two ways they wanna do that. The first is you can come to your today page. And you wanna sync your Google Calendar, which I already have done. And when you do this, it'll populate all the meetings in that calendar that you might wanna create an agenda for. Or if you don't have that done yet, or you wanna do it another way, you can just come in here and click new agenda. This will give you a few options. One-on-one -on -one team meeting and discussion. Uh, we're gonna operate out of a one-on-one. -on -one. This will populate a few things. So you can create an agenda for scratch, or if you want, we do have a bunch of templated uh, agendas. So this will come with pre-populated items. Um, I'm gonna create one from scratch. And once I do this, it's gonna probably do a few things. First, connect to my calendar, then add, add item agendas, and then as well as uh, share it with anyone else that's gonna be joining this meeting. So in order to connect to my calendar, I'll open it up here. Uh, you can connect your Google Calendar or you can manually schedule as well. I'm going to stick with my Google. This will then bring up all of your calendar items and I'm going to sync to Nick and Brennan one on one meeting. Now that it's synced, I'm going to add Brennan to this meeting. So you can come over here, invite. Uh, it'll bring up any uh, sorry, existing soapboxes that you have or you can invite a new user. So since Brennan is already in here, I'm going to add him here. Try that again. Oh, never mind. So I'm gonna go down to the stone meeting here because that's where I have one with Brennan. Cool, so now that it's been synced and created and Brennan's been invited, we'll have an empty agenda. So this is where you wanna start adding your items. So there's a few different ways that you can do this. The first and probably easiest is just coming down here to the add item box and adding some things that may wanna to add to your agenda. Then what we also have is our suggestions. So if you want a little bit of help getting the ball rolling, you can click up on our suggestion bank. And this will bring up a bunch of items um, that you want me to add. And this is uh, set up based on the type of meeting you're in, as well as the role you play in this meeting. So if you're setting up a one-on-one -on -one and you're the manager, it'll give you a bunch of items they might want to add. So I might just try and add a couple from here. And then as well, we have full templates. So we have full templates for team meetings, as well as full templates for one-on-ones. When you open this up, you'll be able to add the entire agenda, or if you want, you can just add uh, one item at a time. And then any item you see on these suggestions that you really like, you might wanna save for later, you can quickly add a little quick heart, and that'll save it to your favorites. So now that I go back, we can see that we have a pretty full agenda that we wanna go through. Uh, and so you wanna start going to check out things on your list. But first, if there's certain things that are on your agenda that you know are gonna come up every week or every bi-weekly whenever you run these, um, let's say for example, goals and metrics are good examples. These are items that you wanna add as a repeating item. So this way, even if you check it off your list, goals or metrics uh, will keep coming back. So in order to do that, I just wanna go over here to this little set as repeating item button. 
And I'm going to do this for goals and metrics because chances are they're going to come up uh, in every one of our one-on-ones. Now, once you have a full agenda, you can start checking things off the list. Um, there might be a certain thing that doesn't really require any additional context or any notes. Uh, it might be just like, you know, how is vacation, little things like that, but still some things you want to talk about. Um, you can quickly just come in here and check it off the list. Get a little confetti bomb letting you know it's been done. I will prompt you to summarize it, but you do not need to if, uh, if it doesn't require it. Now for other items, for example, let's say, well, what can we do to improve our office environment? This might uh, require a little more information. So if you pop this up, you'll get our meeting uh, detailed view. And this will show you a few additional things that you can add to each item. One being the comments, then you have the summary, next steps, attachments, as well as topics, which I'll get into a little bit later. So for example, in the comments, this is where you and your team can come in and add any additional uh, notes or context to help with the, with the item. So let's be a little bit biased and say, we could use meeting software for our one on Cool. That seems like it's, that's how it would go. Um, and then what happens is you can come over here to your summary and this is where you'll kind of put in your conclusion or what you decide to do. Um, so in this case, for example, our summary might be how to improve their office environment. Let's trial soapbox for the next two weeks. Once we do this, you'll get, get that check mark saying it's been checked off your list uh, and that it's been, it's been concluded. Now, if something, uh, one of these items requires, you know, any action items or next steps, so even if it's been checked off, but we know there's something else we need to do before it's actually completed, we can come down here to next steps and add any action items or to-dos that you might have. So in this case, for example, it might be Nick to download and set up Soapbox by Friday. Now when I add a next step, this does a couple of things. One, you're gonna see that that check mark is gone because the fact that we've added an action item or next step means that this item cannot be checked off our list until all of our next steps have been completed. The second thing that it's done uh, through a little bit of machine learning is if you mention the name of a person in the meeting, as well as a date for a deadline, it'll then auto assign this task to that person. In this case, it's me, as well as add that deadline in here uh, for March 20th. And if you add more items, you'll see that zero one becomes zero two. And as you start checking things off the list, you'll get a little pie chart progress bar to let you know how far along you and your team are to completing uh, the next steps in this item. Down here, we have attachments as well. So if there's any docs or Google, Google Docs or Sheets that you need to add to a meeting um, to give a little more context, you can add them here. Um, and one thing that you can do as well is if you're in a Google Doc within Soapbox, um, it'll, you'll work out of the Google Doc or the Sheet within Soapbox itself and you won't actually have to leave it. And I'll come back to topics in just a quick second. So if I come in and let's just say we click off a few more things, we get to goals, get to metrics. We do not get to what I can hold you accountable for the next time we talk and we do not get to this. Um, so this, let's say for example, this is where we've, we've ended our meeting. In order to end a meeting to get ready for your next one, you wanna come up here to end and send meeting notes. And when you click this, uh, when you click this button, a few things will, uh, will pop up. You'll get a sense of how many things you've checked off your list for this meeting. You'll, able then, you'll be then able to uh, date it. And then you can also email all the notes to the participants. So the, the participants of the meeting will get a full uh, email that'll give them all the items that you talked about, any summaries attached to those items, as well as any next steps that are attached to them as well. And when you save it, you'll get a little prompt to rate the meeting, which is a little bit customizable. We have a few ways that you want to phrase this question, but each member of the meeting can then individually rate it. Uh, so you and your team can see um, how everyone's feedback is about each meeting as you guys progress. So now that I've ended the meeting, you can see a few things. Um, all the items that we didn't check off um, are, are back. And all the items that we did check off um, have, been, have been saved to, the, uh, to past meetings. And then for example, goals and metrics are items that even though we checked off in the last agenda, they're still here because of those are the items we said as repeating items, as well as the items that have any next steps attached to it, they're back as well. Essentially what this does, it is allows for any items that you have not completed or things that are still attached to it are gonna get pushed over to your next meeting so that nothing gets forgot, forgotten about. And if you sort by date added, uh, you'll also be able to see any outstanding items as well as any new items on the agenda. Now for the meetings that you've saved, um, all of them are logged in your past meetings. So I can come over here 
and this will see, like you can see I've used this one a lot, uh, but any past meetings you have and all the items that you saved in them are all logged here in your past meeting so that nothing goes away. So if I pop up the one that we just ran, I can see all the items that we uh, discussed within them, and they're all saved here. Another thing, so I'll go back to what I was just mentioning with topics. So another thing that our machine learning does is as you add more and more items, we pick up on um, one of these four topics that the item we've related it to, whether it's a work-related item, a motivation-related item, growth or communication. Um, you can change this once it gets added, but the purpose uh, for this is tied to our meeting insights. So this little tab here, you can see pops up. Based on the items you've been adding over your, your past meetings, um, we'll detect where you're discussing the most and where you're discussing the least um, based on the, those four categories. And so in this scenario, it's saying that most discusses work communication, least being growth and motivation. So what we then do is down below, you'll see a list of recommended items and readings from our blog on where you might wanna add items um, to help kind of strike a better balance. So for in this example, I might wanna go over to motivation and add a few items and then as well check out one of these blogs so that way my, my meetings moving forward will have a better balance so that we're discussing all four main topics. Another cool little item is our scratch pad which gets used a lot in one-on-ones. So if I pop this up you can see a couple things. So you'll have a shared scratch pad which is kind of like a static notepad that you and your team will have for your meeting. In here a lot of times people will use it to give overall definition of what the meeting is for and what you're looking to achieve. Maybe also overarching OKRs. And then the more, more heavily used is the private scratch pad. So in here, both everyone that's in the meeting will have their own private scratch pad that only they can see. Um, a lot of times in one-on-ones, employees or managers might put maybe topics that are a little bit sensitive in here that they don't necessarily want to add as a full item, but they want to put it here so that they know that reminds them to yeah, put it in when the meeting arises. Um, also, managers will use it as a little bit of a cheat sheet. So it could be things such as, you know, the employee's partner's names, what they put in their coffee, things like that. So I'm also gonna go to the, the today page. So back in our meeting, we, we assigned a few next steps. In order to keep track of your next steps, there's a couple ways of doing that. One, you wanna come over to your today page here. And on the right-hand side, oops, you'll see any next steps that have been assigned to you. So I can see here all the things that I have on my list, as well as I can come over here and pick anyone else that I'm in a meeting with. So Brennan, for example, and if Brennan has any next steps that are attached to him that are in a meeting that me and him are both a part of, they'll all populate here as well. The other place to check next steps, and one thing I want to go into because I use it probably uh, more than anything, is our Chrome extension. So if I pop this little icon up here, and you can find the Chrome extension in, our, uh, in, the, in the Chrome store, uh, you can also track all of your next steps within our extension. And also you can add items. So if, you know, if you're not in the web app, but something pops up that you want to add to your next one-on-one -on -one or your team meeting you know, later that week or even weeks out, I can add it here. Pick the meeting that I want to add it to. And now if I go back to that meeting that we were just in, that test item that I added from the Chrome extension will now be in our, in our meeting. So a lot of times if there's things that just pop up um, that you don't necessarily want to go right back to the web app for to add it in, you can do it through our extension. As well as the, any of the, the, the link that you're currently on, um, you can also add that directly from, um, from the Chrome extension as well. I think that's most, uh, any of the main features of the platform. Uh, Shannon, let me know if there's anything I'm missing that I can, I can go through. I think that is a great overview. <laughs> it's weird doing a demo without questions in between, but I think I've, <laughs> I've touched on all the main features, but if there's anything else, yeah, that you think I should, I should touch on, happy to do it. I think you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to chime in with just a few questions. Um, and again, if anybody has any questions about this, go ahead and leave them. Uh, in the Q&A. Um, you can also leave them in the chat, but we do prefer the Q&A. Um, so I just want to ask a few things. One uh, question that all Sumolings or most Sumolings have pretty often uh, is about roadmaps. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's on the roadmap and what they have to look forward to? Yeah, there's a couple of things 
Um, I guess, Shannon, I'll talk about a few, but if there's anything that I missed, let me know. I think one of the big things that we're coming out with, uh, I believe this quarter, is uh, manager dashboards. So I guess the best way to pitch it is a lot of our customers, you know, will have managers and then also manager managers. So what dashboards allows uh, companies to do is for, let's say, a VP of sales who has five directors of sales, who then you know, manages their own teams, they'll be able to look at the dashboards to see who on their, their, their department or their company um, are running the most one-on-ones, they're running the most team meetings, where they're spending their time in those meetings, um, which managers are you know, checking things off the list the most and vice versa, just to really help keep a much better pulse on you know, the department as a whole and all the managers that are running those meetings, um, which is really cool. Um, a couple of things. One thing that it's, <laughs> it's a kind of a, a small thing, but I'm very excited about, is sections within your agenda. So right here, obviously we have it, it's just kind of one list. But once we launch sections, you'll be able to actually um, section off these items into different categories. So if you have a category that's purely around goals, a uh, category that's purely around uh, career development, you'll be able to do that within the, um, just the agenda view as well, which is really cool. I also love sections, anything to keep organized. I think that sounds great. Yeah. Um, so, a, a question that I'm sure Sumo Links have, and we did see a little bit on the deal page, is can you tell us a little bit about what happens to their account once uh, the year ends? This is, for anybody watching this, this is a one-year um, freebie. So what happens uh, to accounts after that? Yeah, so what happens is we have, a, we have a, a pricing plan where, so if you guys have, if they have 10 users after the, the year if they keep all 10 we have a small teams plan where it's up to five people it's five dollars per month um, and then so after those five everyone else it would be uh, seven dollars per month uh, up until i think about 150 where we start to tear down the pricing so let's see shen you want to do the quick math on if it's if they have uh, 10 people you probably have the number better than i do uh yeah we actually have this all available on our pricing page on our yeah. website so you can calculate based on the amount of teams uh, or employees that you have how much it would uh cost monthly but uh, right off the bat, if you were paying for 10 users on a monthly plan, it would be $40 uh, total a month. That being said, we always have uh, a free version of the app, and that comes with um, some of the essentials for managing meetings, like actually creating the agenda. Um, so there is a free plan available always. Uh, it just doesn't include all of the uh, extra benefits that you get with our pro package. Wonderful. All right, I think that is uh, all we have for today, which is great. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And again, this is, I'm so sorry, I have a dog now. Um, this, is, uh, this is a great deal for teams that are running meetings, which is everybody. Um, again, it is a freebie um, that is available right now on appsumo.com slash soapbox, uh, or you can view it under browse. Uh, it's as always, they're backed by our 60 day guarantee, but this you, you know, it's a, it's a little different. So uh, let us know if you have any comments or let us know how it is going. If you have any questions, you can let us know on the deal page. We love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, if you have not already gotten your code, go ahead and do that. We look forward to seeing uh, what kind of meetings you run. And thank you so much, Nick and Shannon for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. You're awesome. Have a good one. See ya.